Hello, and welcome back to Grand Strategy Saturdays, where every week, the Templin Institute leads a nation to glory. And today, we are back with Stellaris Invicta. I am the mark behind the curtain, and I am joined by the voice of the Institute, Larissa. How's it going? It's going wonderful, Mark. Thank you. And I am extra nervous today, because in addition to Larissa, we have the Space King of Stellaris, Mr. Aspec. What's going on? Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. No one, no one's ever made that joke before. I'm pretty sure they haven't. How are you doing today? Oh, I am excellent. Thanks for joining us, because this yep. is awesome to have you here. Yeah, no problem. Uh, this has been something that been we've been cooking up for a little while now, and uh, sadly, I wasn't being able to join in the past. However, uh, today's the day, I believe. Yeah, and I'm I'm like really nervous because I realized in the past half hour talking to you, inviting a spec to a Stellaris game is a lot like. Uh, I don't know, inviting Vincent Van Gogh to, like, a beginner's painter class that I'm in or something. So, <laughs> yeah, so I, I, you, we've given you a copy of the save. Um, so I guess you can kind of chime in and tell me everything I'm doing wrong here and, and what I should be improving. But I, It's very easy, but we're going to have to start with cutting off your ear. That's... Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> well, Van Gogh, right? Yeah, I get it. It's just do, starting there? Jeez. All right, so I know you were... Earlier, you were complaining about the Antioch space station that's in the middle of nowhere. Uh, but uh, I, yeah, yeah. I can explain that. We just won a <laughs> war in our previous uh, session against the Algan Republic, the Firaxian Union, and the Rixian Galactic Director, and we took, like, a whole ton of territory. So that used to be on the border, and now it's not. So that's not me being a bad player. That's, you know, just current events have been moving along fast. Right, well, okay, then first things first, it's it's time to completely uh, refurbish that station and turn it, everything on there into anchorages, And because one of your main concerns right now is that your naval capacity is a little bit on the, on the low side. All right, I'm doing that as we speak. All right, so that's done. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess, nice. like, this session just needs to be kind of like the big kind of catch-up session where we consolidate all this new stuff we got. Yeah, make everything pretty and in one spot so that we can break it all again. Yeah. So is there anything else, uh, Mr. Aspec, you noticed that uh, I should be taking care of? Yeah, hold on. I'm just quickly reloading the save file because uh, I accidentally hit spacebar and the uh, game was like, no oh, well, professionalism over we're, here, we're now, we're, now, we're now three days later for some bizarre reason. Uh, I thought no, you, you knew gotta... stuff about Stellaris, but clearly you well, don't. I do, I, do, I do know stuff about <laughs> Stellaris, but the, the, the Klauswitz engine is is a whole thing all on its own. Okay, cool. So, you got a world. It's called uh, Styrium, I think it's called. Oh, man. Okay, where, whereabouts is, is Styrium? Uh, it's it's in the Shakon system. You just conquered it. It's all the way in the northern part oh, okay. of the... Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So, that place, like, it's pretty nice. Size 14, etc. It does have atmospheric uh, aphrodisiac, which is going to cause some problems in the near future. <laughs> Uh, I however, mean that sounds like not a problem to me. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know how you roll, but sure, let's go with that. Um, uh, it's probably a good idea to tick the uh, martial law box there and go with the uh, influence on that one. Yeah, that was the I think the single planet we managed to actually conquer from the Algan Republic. Uh, so we've added oh, what are they called? What's the species called? I don't know the. Uh... Oh, the Fraxians uh, apparently. The... Yeah, they're Firaxians, and uh -huh. they're also slaves, and you also have some Polanians there for some reason. Yeah, That's there's like some weird intermingling going on between the Algon Republic and the Firaxian Union. So you're allowed slavery, and you're allowed purging. Uh, citizen species only on the refugee sides. Core world's population, only citizens. I like it. Uh, slaves, yeah, whatever. We don't like the slave word, we just call them lower tier citizens. <laughs> oh, you mean you mean prisoners with jobs? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Okay. I can see where that's coming from. You don't like robots, though. What's up with that? We took a vote. Chat was against it. Uh, I see. We think the uh, the robot. It was makes a very a divisive issue. Yeah, like humanity is already pretty perfect. So why do we need robots? That was the the cool. general feeling. Sure, I can I can go with that. Native enlightenment is prohibited. So those primitive xenos. Whatever. We but then native interference is unrestricted. That's, That's our form like, of hmm. native enlightenment. <laughs> what, uh, kinetic bombardment? Yeah, yep. sure. Okay. All right, next uh, next thing you got to do. Food stockpiling, put that the balanced. Really? Yeah. Okay. 
man. Now, what, uh, is, what does that do then? So basically, right now, you got plus 29 food, right? Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Actually, it's so, at plus 32 now, so... Uh, yeah, I'm a little <laughs> bit behind because yeah, the, no worries, game no is, the actual game is running away from me. But the thing is, is that um, if there are any issues with your food supply at some point, then 200 food is not going to be enough to sustain your population. And then pops are going to get unhappy, and then production is going to go down, and you'll start going into a death spiral. So having that put to um, medium, or whatever the term is, balance means we'll get a thousand or two thousand or something like that and basically well i can, I can take it yeah it's at a thousand looks like second. yeah so it goes to a thousand basically you'll have a little bit more food to play with and also considering you just conquered a fairly large bit of space with a bunch of xenos in there that are clearly not humans therefore they are second class citizens exactly that uh, additional food will allow them to grow faster which is something we don't want so instead of having the population grow faster um having stockpiling for the future would be a safer bet at least in my opinion okay yeah because my feeling was i mean the, the lower the food stockpile the faster you grow so i'm like we need to grow as fast as possible but you, you're making some sense here mr a spec i can i can respect that yeah, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, the lower the food stockpile, if it's full, then yes, the the uh, growth will be quicker. If you go to one of your planets, for instance, let's say to uh, Sterium and click on one of the Xenos or uh, go for the little bar that's below them. It says growing pop. It says nice. uh, growth process, process is 1.1 a month. And basically the additional food, it would increase that. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. I know. I know games. I know what I'm doing. Okay, this but, makes sense to me. <laughs> important note, very soon this system is going to completely be thrown away, so don't don't get too happy about that. So yeah. Sorry. Alrighty. Uh, so I got a, I got another question for you. Research-wise, I got a lot of options here. Is anything, if you're watching the stream, is anything kind of sticking out? We got gamma lasers, positronic AI, speculative hyperlane breaching, interplanetary research initiative. How long would positronic AI take? Uh, let's see. Uh, 93 months. Okay, Research Institute, yeah, it's the same. Okay, it's the same cost. Yeah. Uh, well, at this point, you want to cycle something cheap. And by cycling, I mean get something really cheap just to reset the, the research tree. Because disruptor it's already... it is. Yeah. Uh, disruptors. Uh, can, can you quickly go through the list again? Sorry. Sure. I, I, I saw some sensors there as well, I believe. Uh, subspace sensors. 22 months. Yes. How long, how long would that? 22 months. Do it. Gotcha. Because as everybody knows, uh, knowledge is power. But secret knowledge is secret power, and they oh, don't shit. know that you can see them. So. Uh, Varkroll cheered 100 Shlim Shlams and said, Raising living standards will make the ne the new Xeno world less rebellious, though you need to make sure it doesn't hurt production too much. Complete. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess that was kind of the, one of the major decisions we were going to maybe uh, put to chat this time, is how we're going to treat our new lower tier citizens. Uh like who do we well, right got? now you got them on you got them on basic subsistence right right now yeah uh, you can increase it to impoverished conditions uh this will have an impact on your mineral income mm -hmm. but it will make them a little bit happier but right now you're basically uh crushing down the boot on top of them with martial uh martial law so for the moment i think you should be okay yeah the fraxians in particular we're not too happy no it's the algen that we're not happy with who are we happy with the... Uh, basically everybody. Yeah, but there's someone who rebelled. Who had the audacity to rebel <laughs> against us last time? I think it was the... Um, I think it was the Algans. Or er, shit, it might have been the Osperanians. Anyways, we're mad at one of them, and as soon as we remember who it is, uh, <laughs> we might have to deal with them. You also may, considering the amount of energy that you have, you may also want to migrate some pops to that planet, just to yes. increase overall happiness. Okay, uh, you're talking about some of these like new ones we've taken? Oh, uh, yeah, correct. Yeah, okay. It's funny, uh... Like, I, I think I'm okay at Stellaris, but as soon as I get to streaming it, and as soon as A-Spec is around, I completely forget how to do everything. So, uh, just bear with me, folks. That's okay. We, we believe that you knew what you were doing. I don't think you ever did. Well, you've got a fairly <laughs> large... You've got a fairly large empire, but your name is not big enough yet, and that needs to change. Bigger names. Yep, I'm with you. Yep. The more territory you have, the bigger your name is, the better it is. Also, um, this Greater Terran Union uh, overlaps slightly with Algon Republic, by the way. The does word. Does, does does it slightly overlap with their territory? I will have to look into that as soon as... This, this, this is a very important question. Yeah, no, obviously. Uh, but 
By the way, thanks to the White Fennekin for joining the Institute. Yeah. Thanks, Larissa, for keeping on top of that, because I'm, like, really nervous right now trying to do everything right, so. That's okay. You you do you. Boo. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you move that unit, uh, human into the Bur Batharian stone tile, because slaves are terrible at energy production. Ah, uh, okay. I knew that. I was just testing you, and you passed barely. Where was that? Baratheon, or whatever it was called? <laughs> It's not Baratheon. Arian Stone. It? It's on. Uh, uh, if it, it's, it's not Baratheon, you've already done a video on that one. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting. Uh... Shit, now I can't find it. This is my greatest nightmare when streaming is that just to. Just... Oh, yeah, here we go. I got it. I know games. Aha! Uh, look at me. I'm doing it. Larissa, I'm doing it. Yay! Yay! <laughs> See, the whole dynamic has shifted, because it used to be that I was the one who knew how to play video games, and you were just also kind of here, and now we're both just kind of here. <laughs> well, that, I think that that's okay, right? Right? T totally. Uh, yes. All right, uh, I think Zen I'm Lord. Zen Lord cheered some shlim shlams and says, make sure slave pops are not in the strongholds. That's also a good idea. We'll need more humans for Rossell, apparently. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, strongholds. Have you uh, have you have you played around with the idea of fortress worlds by any chance? No, I haven't. Do you know what they are? Explain away. I know what they are, but I just want to make sure that chat knows what, you, what you're talking about. Oh, I'm sure. Well, I'm sure. Well, I the case. I don't know what they are. So. <laughs> oh yeah, and also right. Larissa. Expl expl explain it to Larissa. All right, cool. So there is a planet uh, in the Astinda system. If you can see it, Astinda, whereabouts? It's uh, right above the Vasari Commissariat. It's uh, all the way in the south from the territory you took. Uh... There's a gateway in it. If you hit press F, you can just type in Alpha uh, September it. Tango. Uh, it's actually yeah. Sierra Tango, sir. So, uh, all right, no, but I'm there. I'm there. Sorry. I'm there. We're good. We're good. All right, cool. Well, <laughs> there is a there's a planet in there called uh, Astinda Three, right? Yes. All right, cool. miserable looking place. How much money do you have? Uh, I got currently right twenty four k. I, right. I want to point uh, out that uh, chat is having a lot of fun with uh, Kadia stands. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, the, the, the guard never broke. Okay, uh, terraform that to a continental world. All righty. Done and done. And by done, I mean it's going to take 10 years. Incoming transmission. So what's, what's the theory behind the, the fortress world? Just put a bunch of fortresses on it and get unity or something? Or is it? Wait, can you still hear me? Hello? Oh, okay, I think my Discord broke, so I'm gonna see what's up with that. Hold on, folks. Is that doing anything? What did I do? Uh -oh. Alright, I'm back, I'm back! Oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's what happened. I accidentally both muted and deafened myself on Discord. I don't know what button did that, but... Uh... <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. All right. Sorry. All what's right. the uh, what's the theory behind the fortress world idea? Just get a bunch of unity. So or? so there's so there's two there's two reasons behind fortress worlds. A um, a fortress world is basically a planet completely covered in strongholds and fortresses, mm -hmm. uh, which which costs a bunch of um, uh, energy credits and upkeep. But uh, but a it generates if you set it up properly, it generates a um, hyperspace uh, limiter. So whoever goes into that system cannot leave it unless they go through the system, uh, through the hyperspace lane out of the system that they came in on. Oh, okay. And, uh, B, you can have a ton of troops on the ground, which means that whoever sends a fleet in there trying to take it will take a couple of decades to, to take it down, unless your name is Abaddon and it takes a couple ten thousands of years. Right. Um, and C, it generates all the unity. Well, I'm Unity sounds good. Uh, so what's the... Why would Astinda be a good candidate for that? It doesn't seem to be like... Because it's right on the edge of the strongest nation in your territory, nearby. Ah, okay, I knew that. I was just, just testing you, testing you again. Okay, that's, yeah, that's, that's fine. The, that, that particular planet is, um, is in a reasonable location. It's two steps back into your own territory. Uh, it's on the edge of a... What's the term I'm looking for here? Constellation. And uh, it's big enough. It's size 15, so you can play around with that. A little and bit. worst case, we just lose the Rasnum. Yeah. 
Well, or the Wasari, right? rather. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay. You're gonna do same. You can do something similar with the Itza system, and then uh, basically terraform one of the Arctic worlds in there and do the same thing. That means that everything inside the Haraban Nebula becomes completely redundant in case somebody tries to take it. But at least right. you have something to fall back on when it comes to your core worlds. I'm just gonna look for Itza now. It's uh, it's uh. And thanks to Headright for joining the Institute. Thank you. Where's Itza? How do you spell that? Oh, I, I see it. So I got it. So, okay, let's uh, let's start terraforming. I guess for those of you recording, the year is twenty three twenty two, and the Greater Terranean has started uh, terraforming a bunch of stuff. A lot of good candidates oh. in Itza. Uh, any of the larger ones. Also, yeah. uh, the in the Astinda system, there's a gateway in there, uh, which means if anybody tries to come in there, and there is um, a hyperspace uh, limiter in there, it means mm -hmm. that they can't leave unless they go through the gateway. So ah. it's Basically a giant middle finger to anybody that tries to come in. That sounds like a good idea to me. Also, Peanut cheered 5,000 shlams and says, I'm not the number one for cheers. This is unacceptable. Uh, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Peanut. Oh, Peanut. All right, so what are we at? We got um, a tradition we got to unlock here. So, A-Spec, what do you like? Domination, what's, what's looking good? Domination, domination, domination. Domination. You're going to tell me not to go finish off Prosperity? Uh, well, there's a reason for this. Um, okay. So, domination to me is probably probably the third best choice for when it comes to trees. But you only need the very first option. You just need to unlock the tree, and the only reason you do that is is because it gives you access to the tributary and vassal uh, war goals. So basically, what you can do is as soon as the war with the Algon, uh, the war timer or Truce Timer, where the Algon Republic is done, what you can do is, uh, is, as long as they're still inferior or pathetic to you, you basically tell them, become my vassal or I will kill you. And if they say no, you can declare war on them, uh, say that um, after the war, in case they lose, which they will, uh, that they become a tributary, which means that they will need to give 30% of all their energy and mineral income to you. And this is a good thing because it means you don't need to take their territory because every single system that you have counts as a additional cost to your tech and unity. Uh, I'm liking that. So basically what you can do is you can subjugate these Xenos and say, uh, yo, you belong to us now. And you're basically a, a mafia boss on the corner of the street saying, um, protection money, K thanks. Uh -huh. Now, uh, isn't one of the factions that we have in our, uh, our government calling for domination? I think so, like almost certainly, right? There's gotta be one by now that's a big fan of that. Yeah, so that's, that's uh... probably gaining some support in the... Uh... Oh yeah, the Obedience, the Loyalty, and Duty Vanguard. High Marshal, Ronald Frank. Yeah, the High Marshal's on board with that, so the rest of you are absolutely they are, the, uh -huh. they are the largest faction in your empire as well, so... Yeah. That makes sense, then. Tied with the Human Unity Front, apparently. Okay. Also, you need to make sure that every single one of your sectors has a governor in it, because that's something they will like as well. Yeah, sector-wise, I think we only got... Oh, we got two, and we'll bring in a governor. Who do we like? I just like the cheap guys. And and then that faction should like your stuff a lot more. Uh, they're anti-democratic. What kind of what kind of uh, government are you? Uh, you are an oligarchy. oligarchy. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's it's basically a dictatorship. Basically, Ooh. but with extra steps. <laughs> yes. Um, factions. Ba -ba -bum. Extra national authority, extending your influence to dominate a subject nation. Uh, they will like it if you turn them into a tributary. Mm -hmm. And autocracy. Uh, they really like dictatorial and imperial, and they really don't like demo democracies. Mm -hmm. But having governors getting domination and uh, putting the Algans under a tributary status will please them greatly. Yeah, I think that'll be the kind of the, the next major step we do then. Get the Algans under control. Because they've been a pain in the ass for a while. And we, we, we beat them badly the last time. But we need to finish them off, I think. I yeah, think you so can go to too. war with them in 31. Yeah. So we got a ways to go. In the meantime, I think we'll just, you know, go through all our shit and make sure that things are working. Are you saying I'm, I, I guess I need more uh, ship uh, stuff. Fuck, anchorages. Right. Um, also, do you have any stations on the border of the Algan Empire? 
Probably not, because we just kind of did that. So I'm thinking, what is this? Oda, Oda man? Oda, El, Odalman? Odlaman is a good candidate. That's a nice choke point on the top. And Verdun <laughs> is still good in the south. You liking that one, Larissa? You know, we can't all talk as yeah. well as you. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do Odlaman. Uh, put it one forward. Put it in Marust. Marust? Yes. But couldn't they bypass that through Dangal? Uh, this is not... Uh, we're, we're not here to put a fortress in there. We're yeah. just going to put a listening post in there so ah. we can see inside of their territory. See, this ah. is why we bring you on, Ace Bat, because you know what's up. Although that system may not be a very good choice. Where, are the, where is their core world? Where is their core world? Uh, it's in the south, I believe. Mm. That would be... Uh, right, where is their core world? That's Lav. Crazy. It's right next to Verdun. Okay, so putting a um, a listening post inside of Zanbor would be a good idea because okay. then you can see their entire core worlds and see what's floating around in there. And well, then, got, uh, Verdun. Should I just put a listening post on Verdun? That'd be good. Yeah. Uh, what you can do then is you can look inside their territory and if you see any of their combat ships, uh, you can just take a look at what their makeup is, right? Uh, right. What, what kind of systems they have on there and then counter accordingly. Actually, I got eyes on the flourishing Bion Armada, as you do. The the flourishing or the ah. burgeoning? Uh, flourishing. <laughs> Does that make a big difference? <laughs> no, they're all the same garbage ships anyway. <laughs> all right. Um, Nomasar Dauk asks, Aspex, what about the three Leviathans in the GTU's backyard? Uh, you can't do question. anything about them. It's way too early. Yeah, we got, who do we got? We got Scavenger Bot, we got the something Matriarch, and the Ether Drake. Yeah, so the weakest of these ones is the Matriarch. Uh, if you kill it, you get a battleship out of it. That's nice. like 5k in fleet power. Then there's the Scavenger Bot, which gives you a type of technology that's basically allows you to regenerate your armor in your hull very quickly. It's relatively unique as well. Uh, you are not in any place to take on the Void Worm at this point in time. So what I'm Anyways. hearing is we should absolutely try. Yes, because <laughs> you want, because there's something it's guarding something called Dragon's Horde, which is a sister, which is a planet in that system. If you put manage to put a station on there, it can spawn you either a um, well, it will spawn you a egg, which you can hatch, and you can then be the queen of dragons. Whoa. <laughs> And on top of that, you can get uh, Dragon Scale Armor, which is some of the best armor in the game. Nice. Dragon Scale Armor is always the best armor. I'm upgrading Agreed. some shipyard or some ship uh, stations. That's what they're called while I'm here. Because we got a lot of resources, so might as well do uh, op that. Optimally, if you manage to finish Prosperity, obviously your community picks the Ascension perks. Yeah. Um, However, I would highly recommend, uh, if it was up to me, let's put it this way, uh -huh. I would highly recommend enigmatic engineering. Really? Okay. Yes. Because uh, you can see a lot faster, uh, further even, and knowledge is power. Uh, yeah, because you called me out on the Ascension perks we picked earlier. Uh, see, I wasn't a huge fan of Imperial Prerogative. I was the one who chose Mastery of Nature, but I also kind of forgot they changed how that worked, so... That's, this isn't a time. Yeah, uh, they, they changed it like three or four times now. Initially, uh, all the all the blockers would be free to remove, be removed. Then it would be reduced. Yeah. And now it is a reduction and it increases. Uh, and it gives you an edict that increases the size of your planet. Basically, what it happens is you get a giant bicycle pump. And then you yeah. put it into the Earth and you know it becomes bigger. So, Aspec, what is up with this game? How come they keep changing everything? Do you have any insight into this? <laughs> um, well, uh, it's, it's a bit of a difficult question, really. Um, I'm actually in the process of writing a script on exactly this subject, uh, but it <laughs> kind of boils down to this, and that is, is that Paradox has a tendency to give games very, very long shelf lives. Uh, another example is, for instance, Crusader Kings, which has been out since 2012, and they're still getting updates six years down the line with uh, free updates, but also with uh, expansions and DLCs and whatnot. And that's kind of the model that they're going to go with. And with Solaris, it's been a bit more 
uh, excessive. And I think that has something to do with the fact that they started out with a different project lead and then it got handed over to somebody else who has a slightly different vision on everything. Right. And exactly. the game itself, I think, is one of the most popular ones from Paradox Development Studio at the moment in terms of uh, units sold and stuff like that, which means that they're basically saying, okay, so we have budget to do an expansion and a free patch. Let's rip out a system we don't like and replace it with something else. And for me, that's perfectly fine. And for people that, um, that don't agree, you can always roll back the game to an older version and play with the version you like. And particularly the 2.0 update um, kind of ruffled a lot of feathers. And I think 2.2 is going to do the same. So uh, this is going to keep on changing, I'm afraid. And it's not going to go, go away. Well, I'm, I've actually been like a huge fan of every change they've made. So I'm one of the, maybe not the few, but the silent majority who who's appreciative of how they're doing this. So I'm a big fan. Yeah, uh, I've, uh, I, I agree with the way they're developing stuff. So, you mentioned way, you're did writing you, uh, a, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, well, you mentioned you're writing a script. If people wanted to watch your content, Mr. Aceback, where could they find you? Uh, that's on uh, YouTube uh, slash uh, Aceback Mechanics, or you just punch in Aceback and all the Stellaris stuff will come in your general direction. I mean, I think at this point, if you just type in Stellaris, you'll you'll find your stuff. I mean, that's how I found yeah, it. Yeah, well, pretty much, pretty much. Uh, make sure you, uh, you, you like, subscribe, and hit that bell, I guess. Join Whatever. the Aceback Nation. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> It's just so so corny. Like I watch, I funnily enough, I watch quite a lot of PewDiePie at the moment, and it's just, it's just hilarious. Well, uh, Larissa and I, we made a vow that we would never do that, and we've I think we've we've kind of stuck to that, right? Yeah, it's sort of. We mostly just do it as jokes, but it's still doing it as a joke is still doing it. You're absolutely right. Indeed. All right, so the terraforming stuff's underway. I feel like maybe we should colonize some more stuff. I don't know. Uh, you're, you're a planetary maximum right now, unless you want to start throwing stuff into, uh, sectors. Yeah, I'm not opposed to that. Um, I think we should leave some decisions up to chat here. I don't know. Do you think, like, would that make a good pull? Should we start, exp like, uh, colonizing the Outer Rim here? Question. Yeah. Do you like armies consisting of 300 meter tall giants? I, I'm going to tell you this. Not really. I'm a human first, human supremacist type type of guy. Okay, okay. How about, how about do you like armies that uh, are slaves to the glory that is the greater Terran Union? I feel like serving in the military, you, you, like, that's a, like that's a privilege. They're right? animals, gonna... basically. Eh. Larissa, how do you feel on these critical issues affecting our country today? Oh, that's a, it's a tough call. I'm thinking, uh, you know, given that there's a big war on the horizon and the enemies within grasp, we kind of need all the help and resources we can get. Okay, you don't think we might lose the spirit of humanity if we start bringing in Godzilla armies? Although I love Godzilla, so I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't know, if we can control them, doesn't that mean that humanity is truly supremacist? Uh... I don't know. That's an interesting moral question. You know what? Uh, let's make that the, the chat question. Do you want to rig up a poll there, uh, Larissa? Yeah. Uh, how should I phrase it? I would just like, keep armies human? Question <laughs> mark. Yes or no? Does, does that work? You can also slap xenomorphs into your army if you really want to. I mean, that's always gone well for everybody, right? <laughs> Definitely. Weaponize the xenomorphs. What could ever go wrong? You know, I, I never understood that. Like, sure, the Xenomorphs are, you know, good at killing stuff, but so are tanks, so are machine guns. Like, I don't think we need to reinvent the wheel, like, so crazy with all this stuff. Have you watched the latest yeah. Jurassic Park movie by any chance? I know I skipped out on that one. They, it's it's one of the general, it's one of the central the story plots. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not very good. Although, you know what, just uh, so we have the option, let's research slave armies, just so we can let chat uh, get on board. Well, it's it's not a slave army, you can get them. It's, oh, okay. They're just giant animals, basically. Alright, poll is open, folks. Vote zero for yes, we'll keep the armies human, and one for no, They shall, we shall uh, allow the aliens into the army. I want an all-Godzilla army. 
<laughs> but do you really want to do you really want to shed the blood of of humans against inferior xeno scum let's be honest here like obviously they win all the time with zero losses and glorious victories mm -hmm. but in the scenario of you're, you're talking about a crazy hypothetical that could never possibly happen but i yeah i don't have an answer for you i, I don't know you consider me sector thir uh, section 31 on this like uh, prepare for the un for the unpreparable I like Section Thirty One. Have you have you been watching Discovery? Um, yeah, that scene is not canon because it wasn't in the series. Yeah, I uh, I I've been totally out on Discovery since the mid season break. So, uh, it gets. I kind of feel they kind of blew their load with the storyline that uh, that they went to that uh, for after the. Uh, season break. Uh, I went over to watching The Expanse instead because it's so much better. Oh, yeah. Where have I heard that before? Yeah, well... <laughs> Space that guy. Yeah, that guy. Larissa, when are you and I going to watch The Expanse again? Apparently never. Uh, sorry, the thing wasn't letting me speak. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I said sometime soon, but the poll's closed. Uh, and it was a super close one. Yeah. It was 27 votes for yes, keep the keep the armies human, and 26 votes for no, allow aliens. Ooh, so we're narrowly so, keeping it human. Narrowly so that's, keeping uh, it human. So that's a mandate from the people. It's basically Brexit all over again. Yeah, we are yeah. a slave to public opinion. <laughs> yeah. Construction complete. All right, cool. Then I got the perfect planet for you. Yeah. That's uh, a backup. So uh, open up your, your viewfinder. Uh, your okay. uh, planet finder just hit up hit f yeah and uh look for uh uflau 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 uh you said hit f i'm not seeing oh wait i gotta scroll down don't i uh no, no, just hit, hit, hit. oh, oh has, okay uh, i thought you were telling exceptional me exceptional type... quality minerals on it ah okay yeah i got it a flow f whatever we talking f flow four or something three Three. Okay, where are we? Where are we? Ah, yes, I see it. Should we call or terraform that sucker? Yeah, better if you want to have a nice little slavery mineral outpost. That's the perfect place to put it. I spec, I do. I really do. Alrighty, excellent. So that's done. That is good to go. I got some construction ships just repairing some random stations we lost during the last war. So that's going well. As also, and I'm upgrading. Stuff all across the nation. Excellent. Uh, so you have six years to prepare for your war. Excellent. I can do that. Okay. Um, now, I see a little Mintaka is just kind of alone there. Yes. Should we put it in a sector? Oh, yeah. I guess we should, right? I wonder how that got screwed yeah. up. If you uh, don't do that, your sectors will be disconnected and they get a malice. Okay, yeah. So... I guess we'll put them in the Osporanian Phyraxian occupation zone. Okay. Unify that sucker. Okay, yeah, so now we got two sectors. So the world makes sense again. Excellent. Or I guess and, the uh, galaxy. Yeah. Uh, remove Uflau from that sector, by the way, because uh, okay. you wanna you wanna develop it directly. That is a good call. I know how to play video games. I'm just testing you. How many times am I gonna say that? <laughs> Too many. Yeah. By the way, instead of going to the menu, if you scroll all the way down on your outliner, uh -huh. uh, there's a there's an item called sectors. You can just oh, click on whatever. it, and then automatically you can just edit stuff directly. You know, I've had it up to here with your Stellaris tricks, man. Some of us prefer <laughs> to do it the old-fashioned way. <laughs> I'm kind of blundering around slowly. Yeah, that's called the Mark way. Uh huh. And Gustav Kariga cheered. Ten Schlim Schlams and said, many of the yes votes don't count because people typed vote zero instead of vote zero. That's how Huey uh, Long lost. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was it? That was that Is that the right reference? That guy? Complete. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Uh, is is no. this a Trump reference? Or? Well, he was like the Donald Trump of like the 1920s or something, and they passed this law saying that only votes with his name spelled right would pass, and like a lot of his... Uh, <laughs> Supporters couldn't really write that well, so no one wrote his name right. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? I'm pretty sure that was a great reference, and you guys just didn't get it. Yeah. See, the problem is uh, I'm a genius, and no one gets it. 
Uh, sure. Julius Kaiser says Huey Long never lost, Mark. Uh, yeah, he did. Who am I? I'm getting this right, aren't, aren't I? And Louis Caballero T says the references by Mark are so obscure and weird. You're obscure and weird. <laughs> All right, let's go back to the Stellaris game. How about? Well, he do, he does run a obscure and weird lore channel together with you, so it's, yeah, that's yeah. true. I guess that makes me obscure and weird. Yeah, no, right. There's nothing wrong with being obscure and weird. I play an obscure and weird video game that only sold like a million copies. But oh yeah, what game? Yeah. Uh, it's it's um it's called uh, Peggle. Peggle. <laughs> oh, okay. Check out okay, Apex think... Peggle channel. On YouTube. <laughs> I was gonna make a joke about something else, but it was a little bit more um, X-rated, I guess. Oh, we we, we hate that here. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, no, everything's got to be PG. Yeah. All right. So. And. S sorry. Wooler said. Wooler says, "Are they talking to A-Spec? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, Mr. A-Spec, when did you? Is, oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I just like, gave that away. Uh, Mr. Aspect, when did you start doing those um, developer diary kind of like rundowns on your channel? Let's have a look, shall we? Like, was it before the game even launched? Uh, no, because I wasn't even covering the game uh, oh, okay. before it launched. I did work on it. Uh, I'm in the credits for it. Oh, shit. I didn't know that. Uh, Whoa. Um, but that was that was very, very long ago. Um, I think I worked on it back in, I want to say, 2014. And, uh, yeah, b b because obviously I couldn't start a, a YouTube channel on a game I would work at at the same time would be a huge conflict of interest. Yeah. And then uh, uh, I basically moved on towards a, a new job. And basically at one point I was like, hey, hey can you guys can you send me over a key? And they're like, yeah, sure. You worked on a game anyway. It's like, hey, do you mind if I do a couple of videos on? Yeah, sure. And then, uh, boom, here we are. Excellent. And sorry, I hate to interrupt you, but... Uh, we have spotted the Kundan Warriors. For several months now, we've received scattered reports of small numbers of alien mercenaries and privateers operating on the frontiers of our space. Blah, 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 blah. You know the drill, so we're going to contact them. Uh, oh, hey, Larissa, do you want to read this? Uh, I don't know if I can. You might need to go. Oh, no. Yeah, uh, we're, we're good. Hit it. Okay, just got to just gotta wait for it to catch up. Hold on. Yep. Oh good god, start. that's still really hard for me no, to it was, read. It was Hold a good on. start. It was a good start. All right, hold on. More Dwamax! What you want, foolish Dwamax? What happened to make your face look like that? Reactor accident? Vacuum exposure? Hey, yeah! Look at you! We are the Kundan. We hunt Dwamax. If you come to Kundan turf, we make the Dwamax stew. Not good for you, yes? Hey! Perhaps you know other Dwamax. Perhaps you want them to be Dwamax too. This can be arranged. Kunda not above fighting for Dwamax against other Dwamax, if price is right. I loved every second of that. <laughs> you should watch the uh, video of the developers doing exactly the same bit. That's um, <laughs> it's, it's quite something. <laughs> <laughs> well, if any of those developers are watching now and need a new voice actor for Stellaris, you know where to come to. Yeah, hire me. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I'm Sorry, not desperate. Um, hey, Spec, you were, you were saying uh, how you got into making Stellaris videos and all that. Yeah, uh, I think my my first video was... The first Def Diary I did was Def Diary 36. And I think we're now on what? Def Diary 114. So that's the first time I did a Def Diary. But that's... Let's take a look. What was the subject here? Uh, I have all of them still. So Nice. What is this? Well, I should hope so. <laughs> That's history right there. Jesus Christ. This this looks oh my god, this is so old. Well Aspec is the looking game uh Larissa. The I game doesn't work like this anymore. Uh last session we named one of our flotillas Ryan's Raiders because they were raiding out uh, the Ah. Album. So it's finally canon. We did it. Perfect. I love it. Yeah. I wonder how our ships are doing. I guess I should work on our ship manager, right? Ship designer. So somebody in the chat is suggesting to hire raiders. I don't know. Do you want to have Xenos work for you? We've done it once before. There is precedent. Um, I should put minerals in our 
uh, sectors, though, because we're kind of... Oh, speaking of precedent, why did we vote about the whether or not we could have aliens in our army? Because we've already done that with the Basari. Uh, what we what mean is, like, weird side aliens, I guess. Like, creating xenomorphs ah. to serve us or enlisting Godzilla. Stuff like that. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So it, it does make sense if you don't think about it too too much. Also, <laughs> uh, there's a new election underway to find the new High Marshal. We got Ronald Franklin, our current guy, still in the running. But maybe it's time for new blood. How do we feel? Huh. We actually Jocelyn, have... uh, seems nice as well. Oh, yeah. Huh. Especially with shipyards and ship upkeep, that would be good. Should we support Gu Gao Lu, I guess? That guy? Is that who we're liking? Yeah. Uh, please make sure make please make sure that you look at if because he's an admiral. Yeah. Uh, if he becomes a leader, you'll lose that admiral until he becomes available again. Mm. And with oligarchy, that takes forever. And it looks yeah. like he's a pretty good admiral. He is, but the needs of the nation have to come first. Yeah. Yeah, we can probably promote nation, someone else. If the if the Zeno cometh, and the nation does not have somebody to defend it, instead of you know sitting back on Terra and. Just passing it makes laws. Good point. Just speaking my language. All right. How about uh, who else do we like? Xenophobe. How about uh, Tungu Oken? I can't even. I'm not even gonna try. The guy in the top right. I'm liking him. In fact, I'm gonna. I mean, the, what the unity. The unity seems pretty good. Yeah. Like, I I like the the unity. Thing. All right. I'm ignoring everyone. We're supporting Tungu. Uh, oh, and he won. How about that? So the year is 2236, the new High Marshal, Tungu Oken... Some, oh, man. Can't they all just be called Jim? You know, you can, just, you know you can rename them, right? Yeah, but we... Yeah. <laughs> you make good points. Also, uh, the primitive civilization on Forever Spring have split the atom. So I'm sure things are going to work out for them just fine. Yeah. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure they're not going to nuke themselves at all. Yeah, that never happens. Oh, Hold right. on. Forever Spring is a size 22 planet. Yes. It's a continental in the heart of your empire. Um, this this may be just a general suggestion, but uh -huh. man, mankind could use that planet a lot better than a bunch of bees. You know, you're, you're not <laughs> wrong, but... That we, we went down that road once before, and it caused a great amount of internal <laughs> division in the nation. Uh, actually, uh, yeah. that's a, Larissa, do you want to write that down? We'll make that our next Patreon poll. Uh, say it again to me. Uh, should we invade Forever Spring? And we'll, we'll put that on Patreon at the end of the stream. And if you'd like to vote in that Patreon poll, why not check us out on Patreon? A pledge of just $1 a month. You know the deal. Check out Patreon if you want. There's a link somewhere. That was a pretty good, like, kind of thing I just did there. Yeah, it was, it was okay. Yeah, yeah. Remember to, remember to hit that bell. <laughs> <laughs> what up, Templin Nation? Mark here, <laughs> bringing you another video. So, uh, Mark, when is our boxing match? That's the real question. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> are you talking about the Yui Bull thing? Uh, no, I'm talking about the um, Jake Paul KSI boxing match. Oh, I'm, I'm not a big fan well. of those people. I'm, I'm oh, that's probably a good it. thing then. Okay. Yeah. But I By the way, the reference. Uh, there was a guy in your chat. His name is uh, Knight T23 or 33. Hold on, I just we got a lot of knights. Swiss knights, page. other knights. Yeah, Knight Knight R33. Yeah. Uh, so he asked something about bo about plushies and body pillows. He did. Yes, he did. Ooh. You know, should um, we maybe it... uh, take a break for a, a sponsored advertisement? I think we should. Uh, you'll need to give me a second because I don't have that set up. So just f fill the air, <laughs> fill the air. Okay. Uh, so, shit. Now you put me on the spot and I'm really nervous. I'm, oh, am I'm I making sorry. you do your job? That's rough. I'm sorry. Uh... <laughs> uh... I right. can't actually find it. Where did it go? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's in your dashboard. Um, Uh, oh, shit. Done, done. Okay, I think I found it. Okay. All right, everyone, just, just hold on. 
All right, let's pretend we were in the middle of a conversation. We had this all set up. <laughs> set up <for laughs> You're so funny, Mark. Speaking of me being <laughs> funny... Maybe it's time to hear a word from our sponsors. And Aspec, if you're listening to the stream now but have the sound muted, you might want to unmute it because this is going to be funny. All right, here we go, folks. A word from our sponsors. They've tried to conquer the galaxy. Now let them conquer your heart. From Katsumura Earhart Heavy Industries comes the official Preki plushie. They're soft, lovable, and ready for fun. Available in five different colors, including Exterminate Orange and Genocidal Green, the official Preki plushie is the best friend you'll ever have. Take them to school, to your friends, to Citizen Youth Training Camp. But that's not all, kids. They're scented, too. So don't wait. The official Preki plushie is available at your nearest Union Commissary. Citizen Tier 4 or higher, some restrictions may apply. Warning, some Preki plushies may be poisonous. All right, that was great. So, um, why doesn't it come in my personal favorite flavor? What what flavor would that be? Gun. Gun? Gum? Gun. Gun flavor? Yes. What is that? Like, what metallic? tastes like? <laughs> okay, I guess it's uh, an internet meme that's... that that. Okay, never mind. We don't get the internet here in Canada. Yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 it, that was pretty funny though. I did enjoy that. That's good. Was yeah. that was that a segue because the, I mentioned body pillows by me channel? Yes, yes that's, it's become a running joke since we uh, started this stream. I think with the pre key whatever. Yeah, as soon as the pre key plushy, uh, yeah, the pre key keys showed up. I was like, I want them to be more famous than Domo ever was, and yep. now they are. <laughs> Domo kun. Yeah, I have a I have a Blork body pillow. Really? Yeah. You think it's, you're so great. It's a meter and a, a meter and a half tall, and apparently only fifty of them were made. And I bought it at PDX Com because it was hilarious. No! <laughs> it was actually really funny. About a, about a year and a half ago, the developers were like, "If this tweet hits a thousand likes, we will make Bulwark body pillows." And of course, the tweet hits uh, a thousand likes. So then they have to make Blorg body pillows. <laughs> Doesn't that always? <laughs> for some reason, wanted to get one. Larissa, you and I need to go to PDXCon. Sounds like a plan. When's when's the next one? Does anyone know? Uh, next year. Sure someone does. Oh, okay. Uh, All this right. year was in March, I want to say, and obviously, then next year probably around the same time. Because uh, Larissa is a huge fan of these grand strategy games, so. Uh, I feel like she get a lot out of it, right? Yeah, right, Larissa. It, yeah. <laughs> See, what, what I am hoping is is that uh, Paradox is going to invest in the uh, Expanse IP and do a grand strategy based on the Expanse, uh, because the Expanse originally was supposed to be a video game, and then it turned into books, and then it turns into a TV show. So the next logical step is obviously to turn it back into a video game. If if they do that, Space Doc is never going to shut up about it. So, <laughs> oh yeah, sword. definitely. It's funny though because back when I worked there, uh, this was before Game of Thrones came out. They were in extended discussions about making a game of uh, the Song of Fire and Ice uh, directly with J.R. Martin himself, and apparently that never went through because of the HBO deal. Oh, so that, that was weird. I mean, I guess we got a good show out of it, so I can't complain too much, but. Yeah, they got a they got a really good mod for it for Crusader Kings, and it's it's really really good. If you want to try that out, well, Crusader Kings is the one game that's like too much even for me because I I downloaded that Game of Thrones mod. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna get so into this, and then you look at it and it's it's like unfathomable. It's not though. It's it's more funny than anything else. Like you can keep it super small and basically um run a incest ridden family in northern ireland basically you know i do that enough in real life that i don't need to uh, yeah, what? Uh, <laughs> it's a joke um everyone's screaming about fedima by the way fedima what did i forget about fedima yeah what did i forget about it looks like it's i don't know uh promoting fedima oh oh i think what this might be a reference to is fedima did well during the last war complete. and we wanted to maybe reward the um local Fraxian population. We have mastered a new technology. Ah. They yeah. also want to put a uh, sensor, a listening post in the Fedema system uh, in yes. that Star Fortress. That seems like a good idea. 
So you can look inside the Phyraxians and see what sort of heathenous crimes against humanity they're up to. I will do that. Is that a listening post? Yeah, that's a listening post, right? Yeah. Okay. I know what I'm doing. And I guess you might Glad as well do to that. hear it. <laughs> yeah. Wait, we'll just put one in Thermopylae as well. Why not? Construction complete. By the way, was there was there a big fight at Thermopylae? Was there? Uh, uh... I I can't remember. There was definitely a big one at. Um... Mintaka has has had had a fairly big fight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, I think there was a big battle at Thermopylae. I think that's how the previous war started. There's been a lot of big fights. Uh, so. The, the real question is, did you re reverse engineer all the Xeno technology? Uh, we tried as much as we could, but uh, I'm bad at this game and forgot some, so they expired. But we got, <laughs> we got most of them. Good. Because uh, the Xeno maybe, maybe, maybe have good ideas, but there's nothing quite like human ingenuity. And we can always improve on them. That's my attitude. Exactly, exactly. Oh, I just noticed how uh, fractured the United Clans of Skiron are. Holy yeah. They had a bad. They had a bad time. Oh. We used to be in a defensive pact with them, and then we abandoned them, and then they got kind of eaten up. Maybe yeah. time for liberation wars. Ah, well, the United Clans of Skyron were kind of bugging us for a while because we had a defensive pact with them, and then they kept getting declared war on, and it dragged us into a bunch of things. Which is why we're even at war with the Algians in the first place. Yeah, so we're kind of like on a break with them. We're on uh, a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ross, I'm sure you are. <laughs> Was that a uh, did you Question, yes, did, you, did, you, did you get uh, domination? I did. Yes. Okay, no, 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 no. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, uh, get, um... You're saying I should right, do another domination. This is important, You're important, saying I important, important question. I should do, okay, I'll do no, 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 hold, 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 okay, hold, okay. hold, hold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> take a look, take a look at your economy. Yes. What's the most? What's the biggest expenditure that you have? Is it fleets or star bases? Uh, okay, what do we have? We got. Uh, I know how to read things. Ships are at minus two fifty two. Star bases. I don't even see star bases are one seventy four. So it looks like the minerals are taking up most. So I'm thinking ship upkeep is the way to go here. Yes, fleet logistic core. Yeah. Peanut eight four two one says brakes are for cars, not for warlords. <laughs> You know, he's got us there, right? Yeah, I mean, can't argue with that logic. Well, so we're coming we up on the eve of the next one. I feel like I haven't done much to prepare for it. So let's reinforce all the fleets and maybe start laying... Which is funny, considering Pompey was totally messed, totally waiting around until Caesar came across the across the the sea to invade uh, Greece. So, you know. By the uh, way, do you have any Caesar-related stuff uh, in here? Any Roman-related stuff? Do we, we have anything about got, that? Yes, we named a planet after... We got Crassus, a planet named after Crassus. Ah, uh, uh, yes, definitely a it's great name. A man who got killed by the Parthians and had his head cut off. And then yes, killed, that is correct. I know about okay. Rome. Are you... Uh, <laughs> I mean, I know you've been doing the videos on it. Are you as excited for... Um, oh, what the hell is it called? Imperium or something? Or Imperator? The new Imperator, one. Imperator, yes. as Estelaris, like, has it shape it up for you? Well, it's, so, so on, on one hand, I'm just like, yo, Estelaris will continue trucking on for another three to four years, uh, as, it, as it looks like right now. But uh, now every once in a while, you, you don't want to have potatoes every single day, and uh, sometimes you feel like a, a bit of a dive into the past. So time for a little bit of Roman, I feel, is maybe a good idea as well. Larissa, do you care about Rome at all? Uh, I care enough to go visit it. Oh, okay. But, like, not in terms and, and, of video games? Uh, I would, I would watch someone play, sure. I mean, I, I like the, I, I like, I, I like Rome in theory. I like the idea of Rome. <laughs> but, like, as soon as people start talking about, like, the intricacies of the Senate and, like, all that stuff, I just, I, I phase out. I don't know, I'm probably still gonna get it because I'm a sucker for these games. Complete. Yes, sucker. Yes. Why'd you have to be so mean about it? Why was that? I was just stating an observation. In a hurtful accent. Do you ever watch uh, Historia Civilis by any chance? No. Is that a YouTube it's thing a, or a TV? Thing? It's a it's a it's a it's a YouTube channel. It's uh, basically a guy that does um, illustrations of ancient battles, and basically. Uh, discuss how stuff went it's actually quite good uh, if you want to 
check that out if you like ancient history and battles and how they were fought and stuff like that. You know my and, uh, problem. How, oh, how about you? How about you say the name of that channel again? It's I'm... Historia Historia Civilis. I will just pop it in Discord for you. Thank you. You, you know what my problem with ancient history is, and this is like a real thing that I don't like about ancient history. I, I find it too dusty in my mind. <laughs> Does that make sense to anybody? Well, anything, no. any, anything, uh, that we, anything that we don't learn from the past is something that we are bound to make the same mistake in the future. Uh, does that help me? I mean, it probably no, does. Not really. I just, I just like hefty proverbs, I guess. Because well, that, that new Assassin's Creed came out that took place in Egypt. I'm like, nah, it seems too dusty there. I don't want to. I don't want to go there. Well, I'm gonna play it. Yeah? Yeah. Love me some Assassin's Creed. Really? Yeah. Are you kidding? Climbing cool buildings that you would never be allowed to climb in real life? Totally. Collecting sea shanties? I like that. I like that. Uh. <laughs> I played Assassin's Creed 4 because there was lots of water. Black Flag what was the only, was the the only good one. What should do with Sailor? All right, let's, uh, how are my ships doing? Mr. A-Spec, I'm sure you have some sort of brilliant designs. I always just do autocomplete because I'm kind of lazy. Should I not be doing that? All right, all right, okay, cool, cool. Do you see the enemy fleet? Uh, no. Yes, I do. All right, look at the enemy fleet. See what their ships consist of. I'm seeing some disruptors. I'm seeing some lasers. I'm seeing some plasma throwers. Okay, some shields, I see some armor. three cruisers, a couple destroyers. Okay, so... They are a mix match with disruptors and plasma cannons. You want to go full long range, kinetic weapons, laser weapons. That actually works out well because I love the kinetic weapons. So, I mean, I think. Oh, I got advanced rail guns? I didn't know about this. All right, that's looking okay to me. Is that looking okay to you? Maybe I'll we'll go to full Looks screen pretty. for this one. <laughs> Thanks, Larissa. <laughs> um. Go to the top. Click on the interceptor for me, please. Yes. Click on click on interceptor. Hold on, you're a little bit behind. So. Oh yeah, sure. Okay. Click on missile boat. Missile boat. Yeah. Do we already have a missile boat? I think we might. No, we got. Okay. Click on missile boat. All right. So then hit changing. on. Okay. Hold on, no, no, don't don't yeah, do auto complete. Oh now Jesus I've, Christ! Now I've confused myself because I forgot to do everything <laughs> you just said. So missile boat. <laughs> All right, All right, cool. A missile, yeah, a missile boat. Okay, go for the one that says G or uh, kinetic cannon. Yeah, that works fine. Uh -huh, All right, uh -huh. cool. Space torpedo. Space torpedo. Space, space torpedoes. Yes. More so than antimatter missiles. Yes. Okay, you're the boss. That's, that's your that's your capital ship buster right there. Gotcha. Nice. And I'm gonna hit auto complete right. on the rest. Is that fine by you? Uh, yeah, but make sure that you hit the, um, go to the AI control unit, or at least it's the little thing with the, with the four arrows in it, little box with the four arrows. Ah. Uh... The bottom, that one, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. hold on. Okay, so you want to have the one that has the highest evasion on it, which is the advanced swarm computer. And the computer swarm. Yeah, that seems right. Yeah, that's the one right there. Okay, cool. Now rename it something that shoots uh, to something historical that shoots uh, missiles and you're done. Longbow. I'm liking longbow because we've been naming these after weapons. Ooh. Cool. Longbow. Right. Uh, Evil Scientist 999 says, I have a great idea. Mark and Larissa should be on the next Stellaris YouTuber War Season 3. That is a great idea. <laughs> if what a we, marvelous idea. If only we knew someone like connected to that. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? How did, how did you get on board? I mean, I guess I know how because uh, you did the YouTube channel. What was that like? Was that... Like the coolest thing ever because it seemed like it was uh, well it's it's it, there were long days the, uh, a lot of the stuff that you're seeing in the videos um they are not necessarily close to each other from like um from like a time standpoint yeah because well, there's a um, whole lot of waiting in this game there's a lot of waiting there is a lot of let's put it this way we had like six or i think we had like four different camera teams and so much b-roll was cut on the floor yeah. and a shooting day takes like 10 hours and we have six episodes for like 20 minutes each the amount of content that gets caught on the floor is is quite ridiculous so for instance in the second season where stuff happens seems to happen uh to happen very quickly back to back and there's hours of stuff in between that so 
um, one of the big one of the big complaints. Yeah, one of the big complaints was is that oh, Aspec, why are you sending um, why are you sending the the dragon after them already? They they can't defend themselves. It was like three hours of time between these guys. (laughs) It's just uh, (laughs) the only reason I did it is because the other uh, one of the players was about to get eliminated by somebody else, and we couldn't have that. So, gotcha. Oh man. No, I, I love that series. It was it was awesome to watch. Yeah, it was it was good fun to do as well. Um, like I said, there were, there were long days, but uh, it's it's worthwhile in the end. I think uh, the, the total series, I think, a couple million views or something like that, which is always nice. Not yeah, a couple bad. million. That, that's that's fine. That's, that's that's not bad. Actually, I still I think that's pretty excellent by our standards, right? So we can't yeah. be too <laughs> annoying about it. Uh, also, the United Clans of Skyron have had war declared on them by the Phyraxian Union. So they Uh-oh. might be on the way out. Oh yeah, shit, they're at war with everybody. Uh, 2330, the United Clans of Skyron at war with the Algans, the Phyraxians, and the Rixian. Um, this is a problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know why this is a problem? I do, but why don't you tell chat? It, it means that... Uh, <laughs> it means you cannot subjugate the Algans at the moment until ah. they come out of that war. Uh, for some reason, you cannot subjugate an empire that's currently at war. Gotcha. You can take their... Huh. Plan. You can take their worlds, you can crush their economy, but you can't turn them into a vassal or a tributary for some reason. Well, I don't think the United Clans of Skyrim are going to last long, so I'm not too worried about this. Uh, actually, it, well, it'll I got be you. brief. Do you want to uh, run us through a design on our cruiser, the Vladivostok class? To bring your expertise. Does the enemy have a lot of cruisers themselves? They just had those two, so not really. All right. Mostly mediums and mostly smalls. Uh, go for range and put a tracking computer on there, which you already do. Put a second okay. tracking computer on there. I do like a missile core, maybe, or something. Oh no 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 no! Um, I wasn't going to do me- that. It was, it was a test. Go for a triple meat. Go for uh, actually. Okay. Uh, go for a hangar core. Ah. And all that's looking good. Oh, we only got basic strike craft. That kind of looks lame. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's fine. You don't need too many of these, mm-hmm. um, so you should be okay. Uh, replace the shield generator with another uh, targeting computer. Uh, what's, what's, what's that under? So you see the shield generator or shield capacitor no. generator or whatever? And then grab another auxiliary fire control. Ah, okay. I was doing that right. Okay. Damn it. By the way, your Corvettes, uh, the, all your Corvettes should have afterburners on them, by the way. They probably don't. Oh, they got iron thrusters and no, no, none of that stuff. Yeah, so that's an auxiliary thing. So you see the little aura green I box? I got it. Yeah, grab a, grab an afterburner. Because they might have got enough power. So ah, some it's armor. not going to fit. It's, it's not going to fit. Um, yeah. Uh, what kind of weapons are they using? It was mostly plasma, right? Plasma uh, the, and disintegrators. Well, the yeah, uh, the Algans are using that. Yeah. Ah, that's annoying because you need mostly shields. Yeah. Is that. Mm. That's annoying. So the reason why you want to have afterburners on your ships, uh, it increases uh, evasion. Right. And in this game, evasion is king. Uh, any 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 shot that does not hit your ships means that your ships will be able to shoot again obviously mm-hmm. um, and... well if I replace the uh, rail guns with lasers we could get the auto burners on there or after burners did I say auto burners yeah that should be fine that should be fine yeah that's good and let's see how the picket ship's doing uh you do not need any pickets for this yeah it's, it's, it's role playing I'm the on your side does... I just, I just well no it's it... You can for role play pickets fine, but if the enemy doesn't use any missiles or strike craft, why would you bring AA? Yes. Remember, we are humans. Knowledge is power, and we should exploit any weakness. Exactly, but we're also and humans in that dumb mistakes are made. Our ex- our weaknesses. <laughs> oh shit, we got unrest on one of our planets. Uh it's yeah, Yidru. Screen, by the way. Just so, you're aware. so martial law is going down on Yidru, twenty three thirty. Uh, oh, you drew. Bunch of jerks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just uh, just as a general note, you're still on full screen. Ah, man. I always forget to bring back the HUD every single time. You did well earlier. 
I know, but it's the one, it's the second one. Like, the first one, I'm, like, paying attention, and I bring it back, and then the second time I do it, I completely forget. Construction complete. Construction Alrighty. complete. Um, the stair stations. Enemy stations. Enemy stations, yeah, we got... Actually, not many that are really built up here. Uh, we need to know whether or not they have missiles on them, because then pickets are obviously useful. They do. Antimatter missiles on at least some of these. A Starhold, none on their defense platforms. So, kinda is my answer? Yeah, sure. So, let's bring some pickets then. Excellent. Uh, you got some swarmer missiles on some of the platforms. Ah, uh, yeah. Just looking for any resource stations I forgot to build up here while I've been talking. And it looks like we're good. And Gibraltar needs to be upgraded. Do you have any preference for putting on gun batteries, missile batteries, or hangar bays on these things? I just usually yeah, do don't do them at all because they just, they just cost money. And remember, um, mankind only oh, steps forward, it. never a step back. I'm doing it anyways. Screw you. <laughs> uh, we could research a research institute. I feel like that's kind of... On point yeah, research institute channel. and see this. Uh, the thing, the thing with yeah, it's true. If you want to RP that way, yeah. Um, anything involving research speed, always take it as soon as you can, unless right. the cost is super high. Because even a five percent bonus of research is still a five percent bonus that will it will have a knock knock on effect, right? Yeah. I so learned that. I, I, iron. I would like to point out that the the guy at the top of that list there that you had going for a while of all uh, the scientist guys yeah uh the guy at the top of the list looked very much like chris evans Ooh. <laughs> actually you know what you're really that that's yeah huh yeah he does chris look like evans an under, he does look like an underappreciated one. marvel character and yeah. completely underdeveloped uh captain america's awesome in infinity war excuse me uh not, not really. I don't know about He awesome. catches the thing in his first scene, and the, the lady freaks out. He is the most I mean... boring, bland character in that entire film. Oh, you suck. Is there a DM Rogers? He... No. Okay, I've renamed that guy Steve Rogers. It's like it's like Rogers, the the internet company. Right. Okay. Uh, question. Yeah. Do you have a? Do you have? Uh, you're playing with leviathans, right? Yeah, I of am, course. Yes. Because you have void worms. Yeah. Okay. Um, why don't you become a patron of the um, uh, artisans? Well, it's good to bring that up because we could, but I also forgot that we had the um, capacitor overload on, so we're actually losing 64 energy credits a month right now. Uh, that was not my fault. That's that's what chat made happen. So do you mm -hmm. have capacity overload now? Not anymore. It just resets. So I guess I should turn it back on, right? That's yes, you move. definitely should. It's yeah. like one of the most important ones in the game. All right, so we're back to 87. But yeah, okay. let's, uh, where, so, where are those research talk to the, talk, find, find the artisans and buy their unity buildings, their um, their statues or whatever the hell ah. they're called. Uh, we wish to become your patron. Is that the... No, 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 not the one. Ah, okay. We would like to commission an art piece. Gotcha. See, now I'm just revealing how little I know about this game, apparently. It is a deal. We've got an art monument. Should we put it... Where do we, where do we got space? Put it on your highest uh, unity generating planet. Uh, ah. Have a look here. Uh, planets and sectors. Outputs. That should be Acadia. Acadia. Yeah. And then Elysium and then Earth. Buy two more, please. Uh, you can have a max. You can have a maximum of five. They cost three thousand each, and they generate a ridiculous amount of unity. Excellent. All right, we'll get some more. Even art though they're Zeno art. Well, Zeno, it's it's not. It's commission an art piece, right? So yeah. it's still the interpretation of of mankind from a different angle, but not necessarily a negative one. Would you like to know more? I would like to know more. I'd like to subscribe to your newsletter. <laughs> Please tell me more. Okay, so we got art pieces on Elysium and that first one. Uh, what was it called? Acadia? Acadia, See, yeah. An art monument can also be a daily reminder in the in the mind of the populace that we should not accept the Xeno. And it's just 
you know, it could stand there. Like next a giant to sign the pointing to it of... saying, don't, don't, don't like this? Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> propaganda. Like the two-minute hate? Everyone stare at the statue and yell at it? Pretty much. <laughs> Alrighty. So I guess we can declare war on the Algans, but uh, we should probably wait until they're done with their current war. Against the Sky Skyrim? Skyron? Skynet? <laughs> um, <clears throat> you ready for this? I'm ready. Oh, he's getting ready. He's clearing his throat. Did I do something bad? Patrick Stewart's Pepper Car to return a new Star Trek series. What? Okay, we're pausing the, the game. The Enterprise Captain will return as part of an expanded CBS All Access Star Trek universe. Is that news? Because I, I know that was like they were talking the show about. Will it. Be, the show will be set 20 years after the events of Star Trek Nemesis. About fucking time. They finally Pat did it. It's tweeted by Patrick Stewart. It's an unexpected but delightful surprise to find myself excited and invigorated to be returning to Jean-Luc Picard and then explore new dimensions within him. Read my full statement. Ooh. In the photo. I'm, I'm going to bring it up on screen, on the main viewer, you might say. That's super cool. Because that's what I've been asking for. Like, I think that's like what every Star Trek fan has been asking for, is stop going back in time. Just bring us something new. Oh, and there's Garrick. Garrick was on that? Okay. Yeah, we're good. But that's really cool news. Larissa, are you excited? I'm excited. I actually really like Sir Pat Stew. If anything, it gets us like another four videos, probably, right? For the yeah. YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! More content! Today we're, more gonna be to talk, uh, today we're gonna be talking about the Iconians and their gateways. Yeah, I like the Iconians, and I liked that DS9 episode they were in, where the gateways were in. Yeah, I. this may be a bit of a polarizing Oh, if you're uh, gonna say you don't statement. like Deep Space Nine, you need to get the hell out right now. No, 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 DS, DS, DS9 is probably my favorite one. Okay, good, correct. Including TNG. <laughs> and that's... Yes. Correct. Yeah. It's a bit I'm, of a. It's some some people have sh have shunned me because of his statement in the past. So. I'm actually right there with you. Like I'm such a Deep Space Nine fan. I don't even know if I'm a Star Trek fan, or just like a Deep Space Nine fan who also happens to kind of like Star Trek. That's how good it is. Like it's not Babylon Five. Ah, uh, yes, <laughs> preach it, man. B Five. That's good. It's okay. Babylon Five's okay. You haven't watched it. You can just bugger off. Yeah, although if the creator of the series mentions us on Twitter again, then yes, I have seen the series and I love it. But by the <laughs> way, what, if you guys would... Uh, have you guys done anything about the the 13 Colonies of Kobol? Yes, we yeah, did. did. Are you going to do one about the 1970s 13 Colonies of Kobol? No reason we couldn't. Because <laughs> that would be a very different video. I don't, actually, uh, I don't know anything about them. It's it's the original series, so. But it's, like, it's I know 1970s. the Cylons were made by lizards. Uh, kind of, sorta, and they. And uh, they had a dog. Yes, they had a robot <laughs> dog, and um, Face from the A Team is the main character. Oh shit! Really? Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> I also know uh, that uh, Richard Hatch was in it. As Apollo, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, or, yeah, face was Starbuck, I think. Really? Gregory Gregory Peck? It was his name? I can't remember. Wait, and if we're talking about Star Trek, wasn't one of the A team also original Barkley? Yes, it was uh it was uh Howlin Howlin Mad Murdoch. Okay. Reg Reginald Barkley. It's the only only character I think that is in three different shows, if I think uh I feel I'm not sure if he was on DS9. He was in Voyager and TNG, but I'm not sure, sure if he was on DS9. Or I don't right. think he was. Uh, Varkrolls cheered some shlim shlims and says, Gotta go to my own game of Stellaris. Thanks for another great game. And Aspect, so cool to have you over here. Glory to the GTU. Yeah, thanks for Praise watching. Is there, by, uh, by the way, is there a salute for the GTU? Yes, uh, there is. Do we have one? Glory to the Terran Union! Oh, I was thinking like something with the hand. Like... Yeah, is it like a, like a fist bump and then like... Fist out, sort of thing. Uh, like oh, it's American Sign Language for you. So just two fingers up. I mean, oh, it's hard okay. to do on an audio only stream, but I used to do this thing where I'd make like, <laughs> like a kind of, a, how do I describe this? I can't describe this. Like a thing, you know that? Maybe it's, it's, that's it? Uh, sure. 
Uh, all right, so Acemetic, while you're here, I might as well ask the foremost Stellaris expert a question that could easily be answered by just doing a YouTube search or something. But uh, I've never quite been clear on how the adjacency bonuses work when you're colonizing a new planet. Like, should I be looking out for something in particular when I do stuff, or what am I doing? Yes. Uh-oh. Yes. Um, you always want to make sure your planetary building uh, is on a tile next to energy, mineral, or food. Output. Ah, okay. It doesn't, it doesn't work for science or unity. Gotcha. So I can the put higher, it here. The higher the better. Hold on. Uh, I'm never look here. Uh, just a bunch of ones. Mm, is this the new mineral planet that we were talking about? Uh, yes. This is Itza 2, I think. One of the ones. All right, cool. Put it one up. One up. Okay, that's what I was originally going to do, but then I was yeah, like, the, yeah, the 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 empty tile that's surrounded by minerals. Yeah, that's the one. I already colonized the other planet, or at least maybe I didn't. Uh, but I forget where I put it. I think I put it right there next to the uh, House Baratheon tile. I thought that was a funny joke. Uh, Zenlar22 says, The salute should be a hand sign that was used during the days of rebellion to identify members. But do we need a... Like, we're fighting aliens. Do we need, like, a hand sign? <laughs> well, I'm sure they could hear, right? So if you're communicating with somebody who's across the street and you're coordinating an attack, you need to be able to make signals. Like Haven't a duck seen, whistle. Uh, Skyfall? New invention from Q Branch. It's called a radio. Yeah, no, no sound. <laughs> I would literally just said you need to be quiet. Yeah, but they could talk into like a muffled, <laughs> muffled thing maybe? Ugh. Also, I haven't been keeping track, but it looks like the Tyrum consciousness is doing pretty well down there. Is the like war it. still running, by the way? Or? No, it looks like they've won, and they've taken a bunch of planets from the algorithm. Uh, and thanks for Bored Turtle for joining the Institute. Thank you. You won't be bored anymore. Ooh, nice. I love when we time the names like that. It, is the Algon Republic War still running? Uh, I don't know, actually. Yes, it is. It's Just click, click on our icon. Yeah, yeah it's... Uh, they're not long for the world, though. It looks like they've taken one of their planets and... Good, because yeah, once they are, once they win the war, they will be weak. Exactly, and it's time to snare the trap. We had names for all our eventual invasion plans. I think the Algon Republic was Case Green. I want to say, or Case No, it was Case Blue. Case Blue. Yeah, it's very original. Thank you. <laughs> I stole it from Germany. Yeah, no shit, you did. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but uh, what are you gonna call the next one? Fall Gallop? Uh, which one was that? Okay, case case yellow. That's the invasion of um, I think France. Uh, okay, I've actually I've, I'm trying to uh, avoid the the Germany parallels with the GTU too much. So I, case blue is the invasion of the Low Countries. Right. I, I did like all the the colored ones that the Americans had. Like I think what was it? Uh, War Plan Red was case red, the invasion of if Canada. Yeah, their exactly. greatest enemy. They truly are. Nah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you gotta get those. Um, you gotta get those um, uh, oil sands, obviously. Yeah, we, we, everyone loves the oil sands. So I don't know what's the main mode of attack here. I guess we'll go into the Algons from the north and kind of south simultaneously, or something. Yeah, go through uh, uh, Uflau and through Marust. You're going to need to push straight into the Howling Vortex as fast as you can. Yes. Uh, because that is the main choke node into their space. On the other side, you want to push to your throat from the south as fast as you can, taking right. all their all their capital systems. Elamir is an option there. Mm -hmm. um, Elamir is their choke node in that particular area, together with Selnok. But uh, Europe is basically their main access point to their southern area. Right. Construction complete. Okay, yeah. That'll be uh, War Plan Blue number two. Please be aware that uh, any ship, any fleets that are inside of Nebulae, you will not be able to see. So they may be hiding stuff in there. Well, probably not, though. We could, we could just assume we're, we're fine. Yeah, that sounds like a great war plan. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> ah! Uh, Tesla Effect says, is Acebeck like the GTU High General? I feel like we need to give you an official title within the GTU, Mr. Acebeck. We do. Maybe you're like one of those children who sent to war camp who did really well and now is running everything, like an Ender's game. 
Uh, let's just go with Stratagos. <laughs> okay, or Generalissimo. <laughs> yes. <definitely. laughs> yeah. Let me, sh let me let me make sure that all the all the trains in Terra uh, run on time. Exactly. Have declared war. Minister of War. Yeah. Uh, Minister of Truth, I think, would be more accurate. Or Minister of Peace. Minister of Peace. Yeah. Which. All right. Okay. I'm not really sure what I should be doing here. Just waiting for this war to end, I guess. Keeping keeping things going. The colonization. Twisted Mentat. Twisted Mentat seventy seven says, "Minister of Aggressive Peace." Aggressive Peace. <laughs> Minister of Exterminatus. Let's not do so. I've <laughs> so on my Discord. I've got a forty k RP channel. Ooh, dangerous. It's, it's, I, I never dangerous. get in there because stuff goes on in there. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I think it's like one of the most popular ones as well. And it's just like, I have no idea what the hell goes on in there. I tell like, you, you, the Warhammer crowd, they love their exterminatus. Yeah, no kidding, they do. Like, I don't have any against, I, mean, I don't have anything against Warhammer and all that stuff. 40k, I love the lore, especially the super obscure stuff. But um, there are limits to my attention. Yeah. I, I used to be super into 40k, so I, I've fallen off the wagon a bit, but I, I still appreciate it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's well, it's 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 very absurdist in its approach. Larissa is a huge fan of all the names. She loves oh, pronouncing right. them. I, I love all the names, especially when they don't have any audio recording or canonized pronunciation guides. I love it. Atheus Cain, Hero of the Imperium. Colonization efforts begun. There was one in particular, I can't remember what it was. But I mean, we did the the episode on the Imperium of Man, and, and Larissa had to read out all the, the names of the organizations, and I felt so bad. But like, uh, There is one channel that you can take a look at. Um, God, what's his name again? There's a bunch out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. this really, really big one. God, what's his name? And he just goes over like the books and like the strategies that the characters in the book do, and it's just crazy. The, oh, the problem name? is, remember. the problem is, is like, there's a bunch of these names in each script and each of these videos is like 40 minutes long. And I don't know enough about the lore to be able to figure out exactly where I could find the pronunciation. So I have to like scrub through it like five times speed <laughs> <laughs> through a whole bunch of different uh, Warhammer channels. It's, it's really, uh, it's a lot of work. I think you nailed it. Yeah. That, that Imperium video was spectacular. Especially, I mean, well, isn't it like your most viewed uh, video this point? Yeah, yeah. I think it is. Yeah. If ever the, the channel starts dying, we'll just do another 40k video. Oh, that's yeah. that's what I do as well. Whenever I'm on the low point, uh, it's just like, well, the the views are a little, little bit low today. I guess it's time for a ship meta video. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Works on me. Yeah, it's just like, oh, yeah, time to say that cruises are garbage and you shouldn't build them against battleships, etc., etc. Whatever keeps the lights on, eh? Yeah, well, I, again, I, I do this more as a hobby than anything else. Whatever it's, keeps your extra fancy I have lights a, on. Exactly, I got a real job. Oh man. Are you saying we don't have a real job? He's right, he is yeah. completely right, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Larissa, I got news. Uh-oh. The Pucks Directorate, for like the third or fourth time, has declared war upon the pre ki 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 -ti. The, the pre Oh my god. Yeah. Oh you shit. You know, they're just, they're just gonna run in there and find that the pre ki -ti have got a giant station that they cannot fight at all. Like, that their, their system, Vega, it's got a 30k uh, fleet power station in it. There's oh no way in hell they're going to be able to take that. Maybe How do they have that? that? All right. So, the reason why the Pricky T exists is basically the only reason they stay in the game uh, as they do is because, A, they're fanatical purifiers, and, B, once they spawn, they get a giant station because they're a single system empire and by the time they spawn they're generally surrounded by larger things so basically ah. it's a way for them to uh, survive a little bit longer and being the butt of the joke to everybody around them speaking of being the butt of the joke larissa how would you like to own your very own ant farm full of pre key -ki whatever they're called pre keys Ooh, yeah. that sounds like a lot of fun so let's maybe 
get a word from our other sponsor, who's, I guess, the same as the first. Whatever, let's, let's run an advertisement, <laughs> shall we? Move over, sea monkeys. There's a new name in Novelty Pets. Introducing the Preaky Adventure Habitat. Amuse yourself, friends, and loved ones with your very own Preaky Kick Tea civilization. Fanatical, unstoppable, and small enough to fit on your desk. The Preaky are so full of surprises, you won't be able to stop watching them. The Preaky Adventure Habitat comes with everything you need to start your very own Preaky Kick Tea civilization, including a Preaky Death Legion, Preaky Fortress of Vengeance, and two Preaky Pain Squadrons. Citizen Tier 7 or higher, some restrictions may apply. If accidentally inhaled or released, contact Animal Control immediately. Uh, a spec and our cannon, the preaky T are like a centimeter tall. That's what we've been kind of running on the assumption. That's that's. I, I was just listening to it, and uh, can I get one of those? Uh, where do I sign up, and uh, where can I get one of these preaky T doom fortresses? Uh, that would be at your local commissariat or something. The risk, yeah. do you remember? That's tier tier. Yeah, and your and your seven. local commissariat. Make yeah. sure that you're a citizen tier uh, seven or higher. Oh yeah, a spec <laughs> totally is because he's running the show. So. Yeah, exactly. He's probably like citizenship tier nine. Oh man, I didn't even know it went that high. Which means like he can like take hour long showers. Oh shit! I, I really want to do the like the tier kind of spreadsheet with how long your shower is at each each level. <laughs> Although I should probably work on editing videos first, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, probably. So in the the Stellaris Utopia trailer, uh, the the running joke on my my channel was is that in that in that video, it's basically uh, the in-game canon analog to what you're playing, which is the Commonwealth of Man, which is basically the same thing what your guys are doing. Damn straight. Um, there is a guy standing in the background with like a notepad and glasses. And the running joke is, is that he is the guy who's actually running the show, i.e. me. Ah. I get it. It always has to be about you, doesn't it? Yeah, of course. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. It's like uh, you know we can we can we can talk about the leader in question there, the one that sends out all the ships and stuff like that. But everybody knows it's the shadow government that is in control of it all. No, absolutely. Zenlord twenty two says, "Wait, as a tier six, I can get my kids a plushie, but not the habitat. Any way I can file an official complaint with the commissary HQ? Nope, no complaints. Yeah, the habitat is much more dangerous than the plushie." Yeah. Uh, I highly recommend to, um, to su I, I suggest um, going towards your local uh, Terran Union uh, Commissariat office for re-education. Yeah. Yes. How, do you, how do you like level up in, in tiers, do you think? Is it just like, how does that Chinese social system work? I imagine it's like well, that, right? Uh, well, it's probably have a they, really good analog. Have, yeah. they, have they been soldiers? Have they earned their citizenships? I mean, there's, yeah, I, 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 I gotta read my own history here because I think I explained it, but I forgot. <laughs> Tile blocker tier. Although thanks to somebody who just joined, I, I didn't catch the name. Uh, and I missed it too, sorry. Yeah, it'll show up sometime. And I think we were talking, so I don't blame. I blame myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We've, a new world for our people. We've colonized... Oh man, we gotta rename this sucker. But we 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 uh, claimed the Afano three system, the mineral system. Or did we? No, we terraformed it. Okay, I know what I'm doing. Do you? No. Well, just to just to quickly turn back onto yeah. the subject of how to uh, advance in society. You know, it's let's 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 sum this up. So. Um, Considering we're an oligarchy, uh, that means that we have explored the failure or failure of democracy, and also have come to the realization that social scientists bring around the world on chaos, and uh -huh. of course, veterans taking control of an established stability that we lasts talked about the for veterans, generations. How they took control. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Continue. You know what I'm talking about, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. My yeah, mother so said violence never solves anything. Yeah. I wonder what the city founders of Hiroshima would say about that. <laughs> I fucking love that movie. Oh, it's, it's so how, good. How stupid it is. It's great. 
For those of you in chat, we are talking about Starship Troopers, the 1997 hit. That is basically uh, Melrose Place or um, uh, what's the other one called? 90210. I can't remember. Uh, I never watched those. Say by the Bell, maybe? No, but it's it's basically that in a fascist dictatorship. Uh, see, I watched that movie again much too early. So all like the stuff it was like kind of making fun of, I took at face value, and I was like, "Yeah, there should be like a military government." <laughs> and oh god, like, yeah, oh, we, we should have citizenship and all this nonsense. And I was as I grew up, I was like, "Ah oh, man, I'm an idiot." <laughs> and that's why propaganda works. Yeah. Also, the pre Kiki insulted us. Aww. We should have it so when you squeeze the plushie, it like squeaks insults out. you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, pur purge the unclean, but then with like a really squeaky voice. Yeah. Purge the unclean! <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Where are you the nuclear loss of weapons? Female. Your species are pathetic! <laughs> I'm loving all of it. So where can I order one? That's the real question. The yeah. local, uh, local, local oh, like, yeah, 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 tier seven. Yeah I'll, yeah, I'll just go to the warehouse and sense, pick one up. Wasn't there a plan that we were going to, like, just buy a bunch of, like, Geico plushy things and resell them <laughs> and hopefully not get sued or? Well, no, I was going to buy one, make a pattern out of it, and then make the proper plushies. Oh, ah, okay. This is actually, somebody in the chat is actually making a good point. Um, is Starship Troopers, specifically that scene about citizenship, the only thing they show on uh, GTU TV? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> that and um, Battle Los Angeles just over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Wow, that's a, uh, that's a movie and a half right I there. love that movie so much. I love it. Oh, it's the movie it's... of the century. You, you know that they wanted to make a sequel to it, right? But then yep. they didn't because of the budget. I don't know how results. that director keeps getting jobs because he did like Wrath of the Titans and, and all this other stuff, but <laughs> I, I, it, I, it's probably like similar to You a Bowl, how it's actually like tax scams and like the movies are being made and then completely written off and from some <laughs> sort of corporate holding. The studio's making too much profit. We gotta we gotta get a loss on our hands. Also, I'm gonna finish the prosperity tree, which means we have a new ascension perk. Should we? Uh... Larissa, right, how do you feel about making a new uh, poll here? All right, what are my How options? about uh, Mr. Acebeck? You can pick your top four, and then we'll put that on a poll. Scroll down. All righty. I'll go slowly. Scroll down. Mm. Executive Vigor so we should be your number one choice. All right, Executive Vigor is going on the list there, yes. Larissa. It's, it's exceptionally good. It's probably my standard uh, first pick. Um... Technological Ascendancy. Technological Ascendancy. Option number two. Mm hmm. Scroll further up. Oh, hold on. I, I have the safe file in front of me. What am I doing? Oh, yeah. Um, Enigmatic Engineering is also very, very good. Enigmatic Engineering. I see. I like repeating stuff. It seems more official. Mm. Is that doing anything for anybody? Probably not. Um, as, a, as a general question, how do you feel about allowing mankind to shoot mind bullets? Not a fan. Okay. The, the psychic stuff, I don't know, it takes us in weird directions. Okay. Um, then the flesh is weak is obviously out as well. Now the flesh is strong. Engineered man. evolution is out as well. Well, aren't you perfect already? Yeah, that's what I keep saying. <laughs> no love for Voidborn? Uh, with the amount of space that you have, not necessary. Okay. I just like habitats. I think they look cool. Mm, but you're right. Useless. You're right. Um, And the fourth option is wait until uh, something better becomes available. Okay. So, Larissa, did you, get, did you catch those? I did. Excellent. Okay. So, we'll leave it up to, to chat. All right. By the way, I do expect you to go Colossi at some point. Oh, no, yeah, for sure. 
All right, folks, the poll is up. Uh, uh, option zero is executive vigor. Option one is technological ascendancy. Option two is enigmatic engineering. And option three is to wait. Uh, use exclamation mark vote, followed by a space, followed by the number that you want. Boom. Love it. Who's in the lead? What's it, what's it looking like? Take us through it. All right, so far, Technological Ascendancy is in the lead. Oh, do it like a horse race. And then follow it up a few lengths behind by Wait, and now Enigmatic Engineering is approaching Wait, and Executive Vigor is falling far behind, far behind, and Technological Ascendancy is racing forward, racing forward, and Wait and Enigmatic Engineering are nose to nose. They're so close. Did I hear a horse in the background, or was that just my, like, I was so into it? <laughs> Uh, I think it was a screaming child, but it did sound like a horse. Okay, because I was like, holy shit, how did that happen? <laughs> uh, okay, the inability of some local spiritual leaders on Sterium to begin to blah, 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 blah. So they become more material, which I think is good for everybody. That is on the planet we took from... Who did we take it from? The Phyraxians. So good for them. They're abandoning their spiritualist ways. A new technology. Good. Excellent. There will, be no, is, uh, there will be no, there will be no, there will be no relying on superstitions. That's what I keep saying. Okay. I think things are looking pretty good. Should I be building, do you think, more anchorages or more starbases somewhere? We got two open starbase slots. Not sure what to do with Hold them. Hold on. Let's, uh, let's take a look here. Uh, starbase slots, always more anchorages. Always more anchorages. Okay. How are we doing on ships? Yeah, we got 193 out of 231, so I feel like there's more room. I'll put some anchorages out of the way. How about in the Conthrum system? Uh, don't put it there, actually. Okay. Uh, put it inside of an... Uh, it's a little bit too late now. You already clicked the button. No, I, I, I got it. I got it. Okay, put it in a nebula. Oh, okay. So they're hidden? Uh, No, put it in that big black hole system inside the nebula. Brune Singularity. Uh, yes. And uh, by so the way... Uh, yeah, technological is. Ascendancy has won the vote. Oh, okay. So that's, uh... Where was that on your list of choices, I expect? Was that number three? Uh, no, it was my second choice. Okay, Chad thinks I know better than you. What can you do? Uh -huh. well, well, let's put it this way. Um, executive Vigor is such a, such a good pick because it makes sure your edicts uh, last 50% longer. Which Except means that, that was will... the one that had the least amount of votes. Oh, oh my god. god damn it. You know who didn't have the least amount of votes? Really? Commodore Drake. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. That was a good one. Yeah. For the union. Affirmative. So that's still my favorite line from that game is watch out for the bumps. It's just so good. Was that two or three? Two. Uh, it's a Libyan demolition truck. Ah, uh, <laughs> I don't think you can get away with that in games nowadays. No, I don't think you can either. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was hilarious at the time. Now the reason why you want to put one in uh, that black hole system is yeah. because a you can put a um, a black hole observation bay in there, which means that you can get an additional <laughs> ten uh, physical research out of it. Ah. Uh, on top of that, you can put a nebula refinery in there, which means you can get an additional five or six minerals, and the rest you put just anchorages in there. And Man, it's super okay. far out of the way. So I never knew that uh, minerals could... Uh, or, sorry, that nebula had effects on stuff. But we got a, a transmission incoming here. And Larissa, I'm sorry, I think you got another poll for this one. Hello? We got a message from the Silicron Continuity. These are ancient caretakers. Custodian Protocol 6251 activated. Message follows. Attention organic civilization. Widespread biological vulnerabilities have been detected in the human population. In order to ensure your species viability for the Custodian Project, all major population centers will require inoculation. Bioinjection units are prepared for dispatchal to your space upon positive confirmation of this message. So, do we want to be uh, inoculated by... No! Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I guess, are we inoculated? Answer yes or no is, is the poll question. Uh, okay. <laughs> and I, I hope people vote no because... So there's two things that can happen here. 
Yeah. Um, well, technically three. You vote no, nothing uh, Nothing happens. They become a little bit upset with you. Wait, wait, wait. What? Hold it till after the poll. Let's, uh... Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because we, we can't we can't know. I mean, I think I kind of know because I've had this happen before, but... All right, polls up. Zero is yes, one is no. Vote no on Proposition Robot Inoculation. <laughs> How's the vote looking? Um, yes is fallen super far behind. Okay, good. I thought you were going to say it was winning. Okay. All right, so should we just assume that the no's have it? The the no's have it. All right, Wait. keep your... Uh, oh. Yes is gaining some more support. We've got 23 seconds before the poll actually closes, so let's wait. Oh, shit. Wait. Okay, fine. What can we talk about for 23 seconds? Uh, can we acknowledge how much this guy looks like a weird Iron Man bird thing? Yes. Yes, we can. Falcon okay. is the worst character in the Marvel Universe. I kind of agree. I completely forgot he existed. Exactly. Hence he being terrible. He's All just right. some guy in the army who stole his wings. Sorry, okay, let's go back to... <laughs> Poll closed. The answer is no. Keep your filthy xenofluids to yourselves. All right, Aspect, so what might happen here? All right, so if you had said yes, there would be a chance that um, it would increase happiness as well as fertility and ergo population growth. Ah, okay. Or it could go completely wrong and everybody would be super unhappy. Ooh. And it would reduce lifespan. Well, I don't want to let robots dictate what type of fluids are coming into me, so <laughs> I feel like we yeah. made the right, the right choice. What is it? <laughs> oh, that's spoilers there. Oh, your, your channel. Is, what's, the, what's, the, what's the policy on spoilers here, by the way? Uh, uh, I don't what's know. The, um, what's the statute of limitations on spoilers? I think we've said two <laughs> years or so. Wow, what do you think of spoiling? Ah, uh, it's just somebody made a comment. And that's uh, spoilery, if that's your statute of limitations. Uh, Viper1 cheered 100 Shroom Shlams and says, Hey, Larissa, can you say uh, this in your preaky T voice? All right. Die, Xeno filth! Get your dirty ape hands off me! <laughs> there we go. I love it. Well, that's a that's on a voice board. That's on a sound bear board somewhere now. <laughs> Somebody's gonna make a remix board. of that. Hey, you could always just uh, make a mod for the game that just replaces the sound packs. We're actually working on that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Not necessarily the well. We're gonna run us through it. What's the what's the plan? Well, not pre kick tees, unfortunately, um, but. There would be a Templin Institute mod pack and a GTU mod pack where I do all the voices. Cool. Ooh. Yeah. I, I don't know when that's going to happen. We got, we're we're kind of yeah. busy these days, but... Uh... <laughs> do you have um, the soldier advisor by any chance? I think we got authoritarian. No, we got xenophobe, I believe. All right. Uh, go, to, go to your advisor and listen to soldier. How do I how do I bring up the advisor? I've never had to do go it go before. to your go to your government screen government uh, screen okay. top left. Oh yeah, there is an advisor. Oh shit, you can change it. I've never done that. All right, soldier. And then the, and then the soldier. Decompression imminent. It's hull integrity failing. Decompression imminent. It's been an honor, Captain. Hull integrity failing. Decompression. Imminent. I don't know why she keeps saying it's hull integrity is failing. Doesn't she have any other lines? Hull integrity failing. Apparently not. Decompression imminent. It's been an honor. She has shit tons of them, but for Hull some reason. Failing, anyway, it's really it. it's the most appropriate one. So. Okay, I'm fine with this. Although I really like the way the uh, xenophobe guy sounds, so. I might yeah, I usually play guy. with the xenoph. I usually play with the xenophile advisor if I play xenophobes because the irony is hilarious. <laughs> I just love the way he's like, "Do not trust the xeno. It will lie. It will cheat." And I think that's very true. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's true. Construction complete. Well, you know what? I think all the preparations are made for the eventual attack into the Agon Republic as soon as their war is over here. Should we maybe call the stream? We're coming up on two hours here, folks. How's everyone feeling? Uh, yeah. I feel like this is a, a fairly natural ending point. I yes. Yeah, we're on the eve of the war, after all. Yeah, the Ministry of Peace is happy. Actually, Excellent. so I'll save this. Session mm -hmm. seven is done. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. And Mr. Aspec, thank you very much for being here. No worries, no worries. And always remember, uh, we've always been at war with the tired consciousness. Absolutely. Uh, so, I mean, you got the YouTube channel. Anything else you want to plug while, while we were all here? Uh, aside from the YouTube channel, I don't have really a lot of stuff, and I'm not going to 
I'm not going to pimp my Discord in here because that would be disrespectful to you guys. So that doesn't help. Uh, follow me on the Twitter sphere, I guess. That's always nice. Um, at aspec underscore aspec. But uh, thanks, everybody, in the chat for today for being so supportive. So it's always cool uh, seeing the guys here. And, of course, you guys from the Templin Institute as well. It's uh, I've been a big fan for quite some time, and I haven't told you that before. Oh, likewise. Aww. I've been a huge fan, too. Right, cool. Well, I'm glad uh, this happened. I know, right? We should do it again sometime. <laughs> no, we should, absolutely. Standing, do you play PUBG? I'm ruining the intro, yes, or the outro. Yes, <laughs> yes I, I, do, I do play PUBG. All right, we do we do PUBG sometimes on Wildcard Wednesdays, which is our Wednesday stream. And speaking of which, we will be back, uh, I guess, this Wednesday for Wildcard Wednesday, where maybe we'll play PUBG. Who knows? But if you missed that, we'll be back again on Fuck You, It's Friday, where the rest is playing The Witcher. How's that been going, Larry? Oh, it's it's gone pretty good. It's pretty gross. Yeah, you rescued, or you you helped, like, a giant underground spore thing? Yeah, it was like this heart, spiky heart thing, and it possessed a horse. It was weird. So that's, yeah, fuck you, it's Friday, every Friday at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. So, yeah, until then, thanks, everyone, for watching. And, of course, we'll be back next week for another edition of Stellaris Invictus. See you later, folks. <laughs>